Magoni's a goal scorer. What about Dante? Dante's his own breed. Give me two seconds, Eichel and Svetch, and I'll be coming at your neck. Richard Zednick, laugh past the breadstick, or Tammy will bury. Send him on his merry way, lest it's on carry. What's sadder than KK's broken spleen? Leafs fan with hopes and dreams. Rick Moose is back for season three with hot takes like you wouldn't believe. Okay. I'll block shots. I rescind that you've never blocked a shot for me. Now let's turn it over to the host of the show. His character's high, but his skill level's low. Kid back checks like you don't even know. Championship flow, Jonathan Quick is a schmo. Yeah. Oh, hello there. Tis the season, last year was like treason. Stanley Cup, more like a COVID cup. The year of Cooper was more a big blooper, like Ferris Bueller and a brand new cruiser. Now my car is a star, moves like a sports car. He can sauce like a boss and crisscross like Art Ross. He's peanut butter smooth like Quinn Hughes and a work of art like that upstart Carter Hart. Mmm, that's good kokanee right there. So in comes Keith. Will the boys be Leaf? Can Jumbo Joe and Austin Smo avoid another repeat? It's time to start the show, so turn up the stereo. Put your feet up, relax, enjoy a Bud Light Jack. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 12 of the Rink Moose Hockey Podcast, a bi-weekly hockey podcast where two, sometimes three, good friends get together and discuss all things NHL and their implications in the fantasy hockey universe. I am one of your hosts, as always. Oh, wow, you're the one interrupting me this time. Okay. The, <laughs> I the forgot. The boy from the bridge, but we'll, we'll get to him shortly. <laughs> Um, I'm one of your hosts, as always, Nick Costu, along with my co-host, as always, Kyle Nice. Kyle, how are you doing uh, on this Sunday evening? I'll be honest, Nick, I, I'm a little nervous for one of the most important episodes we've ever done. Important. Yeah, the, the implications are staggering. Imp- All right, amazing. well, before, before uh, we get to our co-host, I introduce him as... The Tony Marinero of Toronto, <laughs> Joseph Camilleri. Whoa! <laughs> I can't like believe that? I never drew that parallel. That's amazing. I, I, that is that is fantastic. Honor, guys, I'm very happy to be back on the show. Uh, it's been too long, I think, and uh, you know, I'm glad to glad to discuss some hockey with you guys now. Right, and of course, it's 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 more than just quote unquote some hockey. Uh, we, of course, are here to recap the first round of, of the NHL playoffs, talk a bit about some of the second round. But, of course, goes without saying, if we're going to get into the first round, the big news is that the Toronto Maple Leafs have failed to get out of the first round to win a playoff series for uh, the seventh consecutive, 17th consecutive season. Oh. Uh, and we are basically here to host a yet another, uh, at least to start the show, another State of the Leafs address. Um, basically, to sum it up, in case you've been living under a rock, the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, basically failed to close out the Montreal Canadiens in their best of seven series. Uh, we're up 3-1. Uh, we're an overtime goal away from winning and clinching the first round series until they proceeded to lose three in a row. And now the Montreal Canadiens have moved on to play the Winnipeg Jets. Um, I mean, there's there's so much to get into here, um, and I, I I think we should. I I, I, I want to start with uh, let's start with Kyle. I want Joe to gather his thoughts. Um, <clears throat> Kyle, why don't you walk us through how your Monday was, what transpired, and uh, just some organic original thought. Yeah, I mean, the way the Monday was, the game seven, I had you over, of course. I had Nick over. I had uh, other kind of co-hosts, Josh and Michael over. So it was a big gathering. In a way, it was kind of the collection of the Rink Moose crew in in a lot of ways. Minus Joe, of course, who was uh, both emotionally and mentally fragmented uh, at the time. So we we missed Joe out there. Um, It was a really, it was a good night. All, all around for me, I just felt bad because I, I was a Montreal Canadiens jersey surrounded by three Leafs jerseys. Um, but 
I'll, I'll be honest with you, the, the my mentality going into it, as soon as Montreal won that game five, I kind of had a feeling that uh, that it would go seven. And at the start of seven, I, I had a feeling they'd win. Um, and this kind of goes back to, you know, the, the first thing I want to, the first maybe contentious topic I want to address is that Nick and I don't always agree on things. You know, we, we don't always see eye to eye for a lot of things. But one of the things we both kind of came together and agreed with several years ago, in fact, was that there's just something wrong. There's something amiss with the, with the I'll say it, the, the character of this Leafs group. And I think that was well on display from game five and onwards. They, they were up three to one. I, I, it, it, if you look at it from a macro perspective, it's, it continues to blow your mind how they couldn't finish the job. Um, and I think that uh, that's the first thing I want to bring up is, is the, the character of this group and their inability to uh, to close it out, right? And I'll and I'll before we get to our uh, the most important take here, I'll, I'll preface this by saying, you know, I, I I mentioned on this show or I mentioned in, in private to, to 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 Joe here. I said I want the Leafs to win a cup. I am a Leaf fan. I I have grown up a Leaf fan. I've been since the mid two thousands. With that said, I don't want them to win with this core. I want the Leafs to win, but I don't want them to win with this core. And I think this is a prime example of why I don't believe in this core. Uh, because before, when, when, it's, when it's put up our shut up time, when it's time to, <clears throat> you, I, I know the word killer instinct was thrown around a lot this past week. When it's time to, to finally step on their throats and, and rip out their hearts, as Jack Edwards said, when the, they collapsed in 2013 to Boston. When it's time to do that, they can't get the deal done. And we saw it yet again here. That's four straight years out in the first round. And, and, and I think it comes to the character of the group. Um, Austin Matthews, one goal in the whole series. Your Rocket Richard winner, one goal. Uh, Mitchell Marner, 18 straight games without a goal. Um, it, it, they didn't show up. The guys making the big bucks didn't show up. And, uh, and I think that reflects on the core. So, Joe, I pass the baton to you. What do you say? Oh. Have have you have you have you jumped on our on our board? <laughs> what, 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 where are you at this point? Where are super, you? Look, I want to look after your health here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, super super quick before Joe goes, I just want to throw in because Nick made a great point. The first words that I said to Nick and his roommates when I met them in 2014 was, uh, "Hey, you guys, Leafs fans," because we both were, and I was in that same boat. I was a Leafs fan up until about. 2017 maybe 18 and then i something changed for me so that i just want to throw that out there it hasn't always been this way for me so something changed and i agree with nick on, on the core issue oh uh, all right um where do i even start um i gotta tell you i mean nick you had that phone call with me after game six i was i mean i was very very close to jumping ship like i you could ask like my family, like I, I have, I, I purged my room of all my leaf gear, and you know me, I'm probably one of the biggest leaf fans. You know, I mean, is there is there a bigger leaf fan? You know than no, I mean? that's why yeah. that's why I mean, that's here today. That's you know, and and I I was this close to you know, but you know, like I mean, I I agree with you on the character part. I think there is something in this core that seems to be missing, and there, there's two there's two <clears throat> there's two options I think the Leafs can take now. Number one, they can realize that there is uh, something fundamentally wrong with the core makeup of this group. Um, and that is, I'm talking about Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, Tavares, and Nylander. That, to me, is the core four of the Leafs team. Now, which one of the core four is the problem, right? It's probably not William Nylander, considering he had an incredible series. And William Nylander, I think, dispelled a lot of the narrative around him that he was like a floater. He's not good for playoff hockey. The guy was over a point a game. He scored, I think, five goals or some six goals in that series, five, six goals. I mean, he was great. John Tavares was hurt for um, for the majority of the series in that horrific injury. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think it's him because – I feel like there was a noticeable absence of leadership when he was gone on that team. So I don't think it's him. So the odd two out now are Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. Now, Austin Matthews, if you look at his body of work, has had great playoff series before. The series previous against Columbus, he was by and far their best player. 
And we actually talked about that the last time the Leafs ended up in this position where me and Kyle both agreed that Austin Matthews was by and far the Leafs' best player. There is a body of work from Austin Matthews that suggests that he can play in the playoffs. So who's left out here? It's Mitch Marner. And even if you look at the play between Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner, Mitch Marner, sorry, Austin Matthews had 34 shots on net. He hit a couple of posts. He was stopped by Carey Price. He was there, though. He was taking shots on net. Mitch Marner was turning over the puck. He took an over-the-glass penalty on a five-on-three when he had to clear the puck. He took two over-the-glass penalties in that series. His body language looked like he was just not engaged at all. Either he was not engaged or he was nervous. So that's part one. You think that, hey, maybe this Mitch Marner guy lacks the will to play in these big playoff games, and you know maybe we should move, up, move on from him. The second route the Leafs could take is that, and I think this is the route that they are going to take based on the press conference, is that they're saying up until game five, uh, up until game <clears throat> five, uh, you, you, you probably had that series in the bag. One goal goes in, that series is different. We're not having a conversation about this today. If you're Kyle Dubas, do you trade a guaranteed 100-point guy in Mitch Marner for, like, a second-round pick, Philip Forsberg and, like, back home? You know, that's the question. Like, do you move on from these guys that are so young and have so much talent? You know, that's the question, right? So if they're not going to do that, which I don't think they are, they're going to try to continue to augment the bottom six with, with, uh, you know, gritty, tough guys. They tried that this year. It didn't work. But the problem is, how can you find good, gritty, tough guys? Like, so if, if, if 90% of the cap is locked up in four players, then you have to go bargain bin shopping again. And you saw what happened when you went bargain bin shopping. Joel Thornton, I love the guy, ineffective. Wayne Simmons was there for the first couple of games, ineffective. These <clears> guys are, are, are they're, they're good players that are in the bottom six, make 2.5 to $3 million. You can't afford that if all your money is tied up in the top six. So I do not envy... Kyle Dubas's job going forward. I do think he's a smart hockey mind. I think Keith is a good coach. I just don't know if you don't move one of the big four, how you improve this team. Like, I, I, I just do not know where you go from here. And, and they mentioned this, this thing on the press conference, constant killer instinct, killer instinct, killer instinct. It's not even about killer instinct. It's just, you guys were up three, one, like even if one of Austin Matthews or Mitch Marner played in that series, that series was over. If Mitch Marner or Austin Matthews were, were half of what they were in the regular season, that series is over and they couldn't find it. So as the management team, you're like, do we like move one of these guys or do we just chalk it up as another bad series? So I don't envy Kyle Dubas and I don't know where to go as a leap fan here. The good news is I thought the defense, and if we're looking at positives here, I thought the defense was completely fine. I think for the first time in a long time, at least have a solid top uh, top six. Aside from the error from Sandy and your Dermot, that, that happens in games, but I think they're solid. Mm. And Jack Campbell was awesome, so you can't even blame it on the goaltender anymore. The Leafs lost this series because their stars did not show up. Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner, the guys that make the money, did not show up. And, you know, you really, you really are backs against the wall here because, like, it, it, it's so hard if you're Kyle Dubas to conceivably think of trading a guy that was top five in the NHL in scoring this year, you know? So I do not envy their position. Even as a Leaf fan, like, I, I don't know how to make this team better, you know, without significantly losing a trade for Mitch Marner. I, I, I truly don't. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm nervous for the offseason. This is the most nervous I've been for an offseason since, like, the, the pre-Matthews, you know, days of Phil Kessel. You know, it, it, it's truly going to be a very, very interesting offseason. And that, that's my rant. Well... The Mar- yeah, the Marner point's interesting, and you're not the lone one to say that. I mean, K- Kyle will attest to this. I left Kyle's place after the game, and I proceeded to drive to Kingston. And so I finished I, the game. At game seven ended. I had a two and a half hour ride to Kingston, and I listened to talk radio, Sportsnet 590, for the ensuing two hours. People calling in from all over Ontario, voicing nice. their displeasures, just like you. And and the number one guy they were beating up on, the number one punching bag. Mitchell Marner. And because yeah. his contract, he's, he's getting he's getting paid like the other big boys. And to this point in the playoffs, he is not produced to that extent. He is getting well, he's getting paid well over William Nylander. And William Nylander is outproducing him in the playoffs. We saw that with him leading the, the team in goals in this past series. Oh, he was um, awesome. 
he's not he's getting meaningless points in, in, in uh, meaningless I, regular season <laughs> games. He's he's stacking his his stats, his resume for whatever that matters in the regular season. And he, he's not doing it when the games actually matter. You're 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 one hundred percent right, and I agree with you. But the flip side of this argument, and I try to look at both sides, you know, obviously after the game, I was like, rebuild, fucking fire everyone. But you have to think like, you know, you <clears throat> trade Mitch Marner, that's 90 to 100 points out the door. You know, it's playoff success is one thing, but you got to make the playoffs. And you're going to be playing in division next year with the big boys. Boston's good. Tampa's good. Florida's good. Montreal's clearly a competitive team. And, you know, Ottawa and stuff like that are, are, are competitive as well. So, you know, you move on from Mitch Marner, you need to get a star back at some point, a star back. I've seen these ridiculous takes of like Mitch Marner for Seth Jones. That would be a horrible fucking trade for the Leafs. The Leafs don't need Seth Jones. I agree. Defense, you know? So if you move Marner out, you have to be confident that you're going to get a return that'll augment those 90 points that he brings. And, and also, oh. you know, you have to look at it too, like, I understand he's he's been fucking terrible in the playoffs, and I want to I, I want to wring his neck too sometimes because of the money he's making. But I feel like this conversation would be different if Marner was making like eight and a half million, right? Think, like this conversation go. would be completely different. Think the go. problem is I like Kyle Dubas. Dubas, I think he's a smart hockey mind. Where Dubas has failed in his in his general manager terms is contract negotiations. Mm. Mitch Marner is not worth ten point nine three million dollars. His comparable was a guy like Sebastian Ajo. Sebastian Ajo and Mitch Marner are so similar. Ajo's making eight point something. Marner's making 10.93. His comparable was always Sebastian Ajo, and they paid him too much. It's not that he's a bad player. It's that he's making too much for what he is. If he was making $7 million and had this performance, I wouldn't care. But $10.93 million, that's a lot of fucking money, and I can understand why Leaf fans are angry. Willie's at 6.9, and people were pissed because he wasn't a good playoff performer. This guy scored five goals. Nylander has been awesome. That, that is a great contract. But right. the Marner contract is like, you're being paid $10.93 million. You haven't scored a goal in four-plus years of the playoffs. You know, how can I justify keeping you on my roster? But then the flip side, again, is that, fine, you want to trade him, but there goes 100 points out the door. How many goals did Matthews get assisted on Colin this year? You know? So it's, it's, I do not envy Kyle mm -hmm. Dubas. He's probably the least enviable, enviable person in this city right now. Yeah, yeah. Bingo. And and I, I'm sorry to say this. That you brought up both devil's advocate points, but Marner's got to go. And I'll, and I'll tell you exactly why. I mean, the the contract number for, the, for his performance, and then you consider the flat cap that we've got in the next few years, it, it can't be done. It absolutely no, it, cannot it can. be done. That, that, I think, I think Dubas was anticipating that the cap would go up. And I don't sure. blame him for thinking sure. that because no one predicted the global pandemic. But this is the sure. reality of the situation. But you, know, then, and you so, have to adapt. And, it, and now that you're in this position, it, it blows your mind that Marner actually put, he pushed that hard for that money at the time. He even, he even sat out like training camp or whatever it was. Yep. And, and it's out. just, it's, it's, it's ballooned into this thing. No wonder Marner's looking nervous and he's throwing the, like they, he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders and he put it on himself. Like, that's what you asked for. You asked 10.93 million. You throw your junior number in the fucking contract. What do you think's going to happen here? Yeah. You and, have, and it's, it, yep. it's like, if, and if you can't handle that pressure, then you don't ask for that money. Make your life easier. Ask for nine. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be a, a, a opposed to nine million. That's fine. I mean, you, you look at the other guys who, who you he's might probably worth, he's probably worth eight and a half, nine million. If, if sure, I had to do like exactly. a, an, an I, evaluation, totally fine with that. uh, that's what I think he's worth. Yeah. And then you like, you cannot look at this and he's a winger boys. Like, I'm sorry. I agree. The, winger is the least, is the least important position in hockey. I agree. If you're going to ask for big money, you better have won me a cup and, already. Already. And it, like, it, it's what so, have you proven, it, man? And it's so How frustrating. You, it's so frustrating too, because this was the year where, like, the Leafs finally, after five years of this court, learned how to play defense. They were a great defensive team. They had the great story in Jack Campbell. You know, he was great in this playoff series. The stars oh. were clicking. Matthews and Marner were, in, like, a video all game year. in the regular season. All year. All year. And they go into the playoffs against and, – and, and I'm not taking any credit away from Montreal. I think they played well in the last couple of games. But you as a Habs fan know that on paper, the Leafs roster is, like – 
th- this isn't a conversation. The Leafs beat them seven out of ten times this year. They should have won this 100%. series, even without 100%. Charles Don Tavares. So, you know, you, you go in there and, like, you're like, how the hell did, like, Matthews only score one goal and Martyr had, like, three primary assists? And I don't give a fuck what his points per game in the playoffs is. I could get secondary assists playing on a line yeah, with me. It doesn't matter. It, 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 it's the little <laughs> plays he makes where he's like, you can't be putting the puck over the glass in game six. You just can't. I know they came back, but coming back from three goals expends a lot of energy. You know, you can't be doing that shit. No. You can't be turning no. over the puck in game mm-hmm. seven to Brandon Gallagher in a new, in the neutral zone when you're making $10.93 million. Matthews doesn't do that. He doesn't turn over the puck. He might not score, but at least Matthews is involved physically. And he's a good, you know. Right. And, and, right. and, and I don't put, it's, you can't put the past Leaf playoff failures on Mitch Marner because this team could not defend Right. Until this year, they had they, they were had playing Cody Cece, Roman Polak, Ron Haynes. Like I, I don't put all the least playoffs failures on Mitch Marner, but buddy, now that you're earning ten point nine three million dollars, you better make a difference, and it better be in a positive way. And I think that's the problem. That's the issue. It, it's the money he's making and the output. Your the return on investment. It's not that he's a bad player. It's that what else could I be getting for that ten point nine three million dollars if I'm not going to win in the playoffs? Why am I paying you that money? I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like the regular season, like for me as a Leaf fan, next year they'll make the playoffs. I know they will, but I don't give a fuck. Matthews get two hundred goals in the regular season. I don't care. This is all a tryout for the playoffs. I at this point, it's playoff success. Win a round and go forward. It's all playoff success. No one cares about the regular season. The regular season is an eighty-two game fucking tryout for the playoffs. I don't care how many points you get in the regular season. Win a round. You know, you don't yeah. want to know what you want to know what. No, oh, sorry, go on. Nick. Well, I was just gonna say I, I've I've made a promise to myself. I might I, I might just not watch a single regular season dude, game next year. I, I completely agree with you, and you know me, dude. I don't even go like in Kingston. I don't go to I, when I was in the Kingston. I didn't even go to bars to watch the game. I would stay home, yeah. watch the game, and then go out. I'm not doing that this year. I don't care. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna win 30, 40 games this year. They're they're gonna win 30, 45, 50 games. They're they're gonna make the playoffs. They're gonna finish in second or third in the division. That's fine. I don't care. I do not care. Regular season success means nothing. Win in the playoffs. You have a generational center in Austin Matthews, a, a, a player that's probably going to go to the Hall of Fame in John Tavares. You need to win a round in the playoffs. You need to have playoff success. Why can teams like Montreal and Winnipeg, who are so inferior to the Maple Leafs, at least on paper, win games, and you guys can't? What is the issue here? I, I it, it, it's in, it's incredible. Now you're does it, you're not, conf- does it not baffle like logic yes, and reason I'm, and like I'm confused. Everything? Like is that not? Are you not like you know what I'm trying to say? Like I, I'm confused. After game Kyle, after game five, after game four, sir, when it was three one, this series was over. They yes, played the best playoff done. game. I've, in game four, they played the best playoff game I've ever seen them play in the Matthews era. Defensive Correct. shutout, Correct. four Correct. goals, get scoring. This series was there for them. All they had to do, they had three chances to win, and they lost all the so, chances. It so just, I, it baffles logic and reason. Yes, and I'll, I'll add another wrinkle to the confusion. Is that two of them were in overtime. They were a goal away from Yes, them. exactly, like, exactly. I, and, 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 and errors, too, blatant errors. They just errors. lost in, in the most leafy way possible. Galchenyuk yes. was a great story all year. The Leafs kind of rebuilt him. What the fuck was that pass? The guy, the hey. guy <laughs> passing across the zone. I don't even care about the pinch right. from Bogosian. Bogosian could pinch because he had a man covering him. Galchenyuk was covering him. That's fine. Guy slings a backhand or pizza across yeah. the ice, back the other way in the net. Yeah. Overtime, game six. The Leafs were killing them. They had, like, I think, 13 shots. 13 to 2. Dur- Dermot decides to fucking do a spin around and pass the puck up to Kokanyemi. Out Bogosian's leg in the back of the net. The most leafy way to lose games. They lost. Like, and, and, and it's just it, like you're sick and tired of being a leaf fan because I've defended them year and year again, defended this yeah, core, yeah, defended yeah, the yeah. team to Sens fans, to Habs fans, to idiots that don't watch hockey and just say the Leafs suck. You know, the people, the Leaf fans who are, have this pessimistic attitude about the Leafs, I defended them all year. I truly thought this year was different. And then they have three chances to win this series and they can't do it. It's so frustrating. I, I'm and, at like Steve Dangle level now. We're like, yeah, I know if you watch this LFR after the game, we're yeah, 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 yeah. drinking yeah. beer. That was me. That was me. <laughs> I, I, you know, well, the only ray of hope I have 
is that is that these guys are still young and they're still extremely talented and they may be able to get it done if you know if if they finally put their minds to it but i cannot keep waiting like this is 17 years without a playoff round win not even like 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 the, i don't give a fuck like i would like them to win the cup but i'll settle for the semifinals or the quarterfinals i don't care that's how that's how below the bar has dropped with this fucking organization this is yeah. like Chicago Cubs level on bordering <laughs> on Chicago Cubs level bad. They might be, I don't even like, this might be the most embarrassing organization in professional sports. There's like them, the Knicks and like the Cubs. It used to be the Browns, but the Browns won a playoff game. So I don't know what to do. Few things there. First, Chucky was due for a fuck up. There it was. Second, to compound the embarrassment of this team, they have, the highest paid staff. They have the largest resources. They have best medical, best, best everything. They have, the, they have the most highest paid staff in the league. Resources, not an issue. My fucking confusion comes, and it's even more baffling, is because the moves that Dubas made, none of us criticized. Most of us said, wow, this guy's a genius. Because what did he do? He addressed the errors that we all said the Leafs had from last year. Air, like errors revolving around character, errors revolving around truculence and defense. Defense was fine. He did that job. He plugged those holes. TJ Brody's a great player. Oh, now, fantastic. Where, where the, why did you get all these guys who are lauded for their character? Joe Thornton, Wayne Simmons, Nick Felino, the bunch. How do you have all these guys in the room and on the ice? And you still like no one gives an inspiring performance in those three games. Well, Give me one guy. I like one guy say something in the room, and then I want someone to come out with fire because they didn't start any of those games on time. Not one of those games did they start on time. And I like, what does it take to 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 get one of these guys to just go off? Like you know you know that saying? Oh, he was playing out of his mind. You needed that once. You needed that once in three games. Matthews have yeah, like, like it, it Martin, we, even, we're talking about Marner all day long, and yes, he deserves the criticism, but I, I was really disappointed in Matthews as well. Mm-hmm. Like he because he hey, has Matt, the Matthews shot. Matthews bears some of the blame as well. I agree, yeah, but I mean he's a bigger at least game he was, breaker. Like at least he was shooting on net like that. Like, yeah, I know the but, bar is re- the bar should be a lot higher for the Rocket Richard winner and one of the top five centers or top five. Forget about centers, top five players in the league the bar should be a little bit higher for you i agree but it's like the depth wasn't the problem their depth guys were contributing kerfoot played some of the best hockey he did great he did great spezza was amazing spezza was amazing even galchenyuk in game three or was it game three or four with those backhanded passes fantastic it was the two guys that make the most money on this team that did not contribute marner and matthews you didn't even need both you needed just one, and both of them didn't play. If Matthews had played like he did in the regular season, this series is over in five. It's done. It's over. You're in Toronto. No fans. No one's in the crowd. Just score a goal. It's over. And you go down 3 nothing. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm sorry. That game six was pathetic. Full credit to Montreal. They came out and played. But how the fuck did you start that lifeless? In an elimination game. Knowing your team's history, like that, yeah. that is that speaks to a couple of things. I think, I think the the miss John Tavares missing, they still should have beat the Habs of John Tavares, no question. I, I, I no, not making, not making the excuse at all. But man, do they miss his leadership in the room? Like, like they just had no one. Like, like you know, and 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 you know, full credit to you know, even Joe Thornton scored a goal. You know, I don't, I don't, ex- I didn't expect him to be like awesome, but like even he scored a goal. Like, you know, Mitch, like, come on. Like, you're being, you, you were outscored by a fucking like 41 year old Joel Thornton. Right. And boy, that's the thing, it's the money. It's just like, how? Yeah. 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 Um, see, I, I think the real sad thing is, and, and to go back to the martyr point is, like you guys, you're, you guys are so emphatic about how he's got to go, but if there's got to go, I gathered from that press conference, the postmortem is that he's not because basically Dubas is a big simp. 
The guy yes, cares, exactly. he, he cares more I, about relationships. I'm not I'm not necessarily and personalities sure. and people and I want I, I want to make my guys happy. I'm Mr. Nice Guy. So I'm not That's, gonna cut ties with them just yet because I like them because I've broken bread with them. I, I don't think Fuck that's you. the reason. I don't think that's like, the reason. Fucking grow some spine and be like Lou Lamorello and fucking. I agree, man. I don't think. I don't think the guys who got to go. I, I, agree. I, I agree with the fact that he might need to go, but I don't think that's the approach he's taking. I think he's taking the approach that Pierre LeBrun and uh, Poulin were saying, where if you're in Dubas's position, it's extremely difficult. Like he like to trade a Mitch Marner, considering how good of a player he is like it's all about the return like if i'm going to trade mitch marner you need to get a star back mitch marner is a top 10 top 15 player in the league he is and points wise he is so you need to get a star back so i understand the resilience but at the same time i also love matthews and love Tavares and love nylander and i know this core is capable of winning and if there's one guy that continuously doesn't play in the playoffs well, maybe he has to go. You know, there's two sides. I get where Dubas is coming from, but as a fan and as someone who, like, knows how great Matthews is and how – like like I said at the beginning, it's all about body of work. We've seen Matthews perform in the playoffs. How many big goals has he scored against Boston, Washington series, against Columbus last year? He has a body of work where he's been good in the playoffs. There's not one series where I'm like, yeah, Marner was the best player. None. Not none of them. No. So that's the issue. There's no history of Marner being good in the playoffs at all. I, Matthews, I'll chalk it up to a bad series. I'm disappointed in him, but he has history of being good. Even Nylander. Nylander scored a bunch of big goals in that series against Washington. And he scored against Boston last year. He's the one who started the comeback against Columbus last year, too. And this year, he was awesome. So I don't have any problems with him. I, John Tavares I just, is going to I just, I think you have to get, you have to get used to the reality that despite all the requests to have Marner gone, he's not going anywhere. Like, based on I, that, I press, agree with Shanahan you. I don't... and Dubis, they were very defensive about him. And I can't. Not show, unless anywhere. they're not showing their cards, unless they're not putting it on, unless they're not showing their cards because they don't want to come from a right. position of weakness. That's Fair the enough. only thing I could think of from a negotiation yeah. tactic. If you go yeah. in there and saying all options are on the table, you might have teams come over and say, yeah, well, you know, he didn't play that well in the playoffs. We'll give you like yeah. a second and, and like fucking Philip Forsberg for him. That's a bad return. You can't get that. If you're trading Mitch Marner, you need to get a star back. On offense or defense, one of them. You need to get a star back. You yeah, can't you can't lose it's, this. You cannot lose this trade. This is need, like Yeah. It's yeah, gotta this be is, yeah. This, it, there needs to be ahead. a significant trade. Like the best parallel I can draw in a lot of sports writers have been drawing it. Was DeMar DeRozan, if yeah. you guys, basketball? I was just about yeah. to say that, yeah. DeMar DeRozan was a beloved guy in Toronto. He was always good in the regular season, put up, but in the playoffs, he just couldn't fucking hack it, man. And they made a trade, and they and they made sure that when they made that trade, they got a superstar back in Kawhi Leonard. And obviously, the yeah. dynamics of the NBA and the NHL are a bit different, but <sighs> Marner is a top five player in the league, like a top five points getter in the league. You can fetch as much as you want for him. Well, but you can't do that. But you can't do that from a position of weakness. There, but I know what you're trying to say, Kyle. And I get it. But like, there are shitty fucking teams that will take that to make him a star. You don't think like a team like Arizona or a market like San Jose that could desperately use a star? They'll sell that. He'll go sure, to San Jose and sure. get 140 points every year. They'll fucking lose in the playoffs. But you know what? Fuck it. Like I'll take I'll take the return back. And more so than the the return, it's the cap room that you get. What can you do with that cap room? The ten point nine million, nine three million that's not uh, that's on the books, you know, well, and, and and they got a bit of a bunch of decisions too. Like Hyman, I'm hearing from Frank Valley that Hyman wants six million dollars. If Hyman wants six million dollars, he can get the fuck out of town. I'm not paying him; he's not worth six million. Right. Um, on the on the Marner possible trade, you're gonna take a haircut in talent, no matter what, because the contract is so bad. As as good as he is as a point getter, yeah. People have seen the body of work. It, he, they know he's not worth the contract. Yeah, and, that, and that's on Kyle. And that's, yes, that that's on, on, yeah. that's 100% like, on Kyle. They, they should have yes. kept Lou Lamorello around for comparable. one more year. They should have let him do that negotiation. Why couldn't they have offered him a bridge? job to some to some guy who had no experience in Sault Ste. Marie, 
who came off of Marley's Cup. Who fucking cares about a no. Calder Cup? And uh, du- they brought du- him in, well, no. and he fucking Listen. fucked up the salary. No, 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 no. Listen, du- Dubas has been has been solid for this team. The one negotiation he failed on was this. I agree. That was a bad failure, but he – his what so Dubas should have done. Failure. You only got him for three more years, Joe. Matthews is gone in three years. He's, he's not. Gone. He'll he'll he's resign. Gone. I I I will bet you guys right now that he'll resign. He'll definitely resign. They'll give him the and world. You gave he'll... eleven million dollars to a guy who we can't afford. We can't afford you... John Tavares. We can't. Well, afford no, John. Him. Okay. So let, let's back this up for a second. John Tavares has been nothing but productive as a Maple Leaf. This guy's a point per game. This guy's the captain. He has been nothing but productive in the Leaf uniform. That was a good sign. You can't argue with the John Tavares saying he's been nothing but productive. The one failure. Why, why would uh, Nazim Kadri was just fine? He gets because Nazim Kadri is not as good as because Nazim Kadri is not as good as John Tavares, and Nazim Kadri right now is sitting on the bench because he's an <laughs> idiot and doesn't know how to play in the playoffs. That's why you got rid of him. And Nazim Kadri was originally supposed to go for TJ Brody. The Dubas, tri- the, the the Barry and Kerfer trade would never have happened if Nazim Kadri wasn't such a little fucking baby and didn't want to go play in fucking Calgary. That that's he's the smart. So let's He's not smart. play. He's smart for that. I agree. I know I wouldn't want. I wouldn't even want to go to Calgary, let alone play there. But I mean, that's 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 the issue here. The, the problem. The problem is, I think Dubis has done a great, a decent, a great job with this team. Um, it, the issue is that the modern negotiation was failed because he should have. If he wasn't going to take Aho money, then he should have said, you know what? Either you sit out or you take a bridge deal because you're not worth ten point nine three million. He should have taken a bridge deal. And no, right. I don't think Lou would have been a better GM for this team. Lou would have fucking signed Leo Comra the six year. Hey, the reason whoa, why the Leafs don't whoa, have any the, Le- the reason why the Leafs don't have draft picks is because he fucking paid Patrick Marlowe for two four point two five million. And and the reason why the Leafs had to have Cody Ceci for a year is because he signed Zaitsev. I don't know what talent he saw there. Whoa, whoa, you got to yeah, back well, it the up Islanders there. are on the verge of beating the hey, Bruins. Hey. So how do you like that? Lou you know Lamorello. Lou Lamorello. Lamorell bringing in Zajac, Palmieri, and Pajot have been absolutely monumental in their success as of well, right Zajac now. Zajac hasn't, but... And, he's been Palmieri, great. He's Palmieri been great. Okay, but yeah, no. The and team... The team with, that are, team is... That team is the best fourth line in the league. Lou is well, legit, that, But that man. line was like, there before Lou, dude. That, that was not Lou. Lou... Lou did not do much for that Islanders team. That Islanders team was constructed oh, well before them. In fact, Lou was probably the biggest fleecing in the past five years was that Devon tra- Caves trade, who is a top four defenseman. He gave him way more like a second round pick. Listen, I'm not here to, to discuss Lou Lamorello. I think what he did for the Leafs right. and bringing in a new culture was fantastic. I just don't think that he's suited. I, I don't think he would have been good for Toronto. I, I like Dubas. I think he's a smart hockey mind. But I am conceding the fact, and I agree with you, Nick, that the modern negotiation was a failure. He was not worth ten point three nine three million dollars. He never was. His comparable should have been and still is what Aho got in that offer sheet. He is worth an eight to nine million dollars player. He's not worth more than that. That's the problem. I agree with you. I'm not really to have a referendum on Kyle Dubas. I will be after this offseason, depending on what he does. But I still think that he could see it through. And the only thing that gave me confidence was how confident Shanahan and Dubas were. That, that's what gave me confidence in Leaf and how confident they were at the press conference. But I still do think that it, from a negotiation standpoint, you can't go out there and say, well, yeah, we have no faith in our core. All options are on the table. That's not a good negotiating tactic. Right. Okay. I hope you're right. I hope, I I'm hope not hard no, respect no. but that's I, not I a good negotiating yeah, tactic. Bluffing. I really do. I, hey, I'm, I'm with Nick on this. Dubas is in my doghouse big time on this. And if he doesn't move Marner, I, I, I'm telling you nothing changes. And especially if you lose Hyman because of all the money up top, it's, it's big problems. Like, okay, you, but you, you move agree. backwards. You're moving but, but backwards. Again, this is, but this is another thing. Like you can lose Hyman if he demands something ridiculous. Like the rumors I'm hearing is 6 million. Hyman is, well, Zach that's... Hyman is not worth $6 million. Edmonton will pay him $6 million because they're idiots. They'll pay him 6 million. Him and Tyson Bear will come back on a package deal next year, but they they will not like, Six million dollars is what ridiculous. about 5.5? What about 5.5? I don't think that's too high. He's 29 years old, he, 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 and he's also part of the playoff failures. Zach Hyman, in, 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 uh, if you look at his if you look at his underlying numbers in elimination games, he's been fucking terrible too. And I will give him a pass this year because I, I think I I think he was still injured. I don't know if you guys noticed that he looked like he didn't have the Hyman sort of. I love Zach Hyman, I'd like him to stay, but not for six million dollars. You're not getting six million dollars here. And you shouldn't get that anywhere, but a team will pay him. Joe, Joe is, is Hyman not the Leafs Gallagher? 
he is the least Gallagher, but he's still not worth six million dollars. Ga- Ga- I would Gallagher, Gallagher makes six, five point five. I would pay Gallagher five point five because I think Gallagher has more offensive upside than than Hy- Gallagher's just a better player than Zach Hyman. He right, is, like, there, there's no doubt about that. Gallagher's one of the best power forwards in the league, in my opinion. But I I wouldn't I I wouldn't pay Gall- like Gall- if Gallagher wanted six, I'd give Gallagher six because that guy his offensive I think his offensive upside, his ceiling is higher than Zach Hyman's. And as a half fan, I'm sure you agree with that. I agree. I, I, a lot of people would tell you though, that he is this uh, uh, in a lot of ways, the straw that stirs the drink for that top line. And I think if you lose that, especially, you know, and, looking at what this and, Leafs team needs, it's, it's a problem. It's a big problem. Listen, I, I, I would love for Zach Hyman to come back. Love that to come, to come back. But if he wants $6 million, he ain't getting it here. And I don't think you should get and, that. And anywhere. there's a and there's a reason. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, like you guys, you gotta start analyzing where you want to put your money. You know, like maybe it should be in these guys. That's the that's, that's listen. Hey, listen. That that's for them to figure out. <sighs> and and I, I I think we can agree that that there have been some mismanagements from Dubis, uh, no different than any other GM in the league. The Marner negotiation was a failure. But 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 Nick, I completely disagree with you, and I've always disagreed with you in the John Tavares thing. John Tavares has been nothing but productive since he's come here. And you know, and I know, if Jen Tavares is in the series, this is a completely different series if he's there. Not to make an excuse, but I'm just saying, because Keith's whole game plan was that you can shut down the Matthews lines, that, that's fine. But you can't shut down the Tavares line with Nylander playing the way he was playing. No, I, 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 I we'll never know. I, I, we'll I never know. You that, that the Tavares I'm not here to make an excuse. Center depth. And I you haven't told made excuses me I was here, and I'm not. At, at the time, I said, this is going to ruin their center depth. <clears> this is going to really hurt them. And you said, Nick, you're blowing this out of proportion. They're what, just what, 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 for, what, with respect to what, the Martin negotiation? No, no, no. I'm just saying, when Tavares went down, I said, this is really going to hurt them in the series. This is really going to hurt their center depth. And you said, don't worry. Well, Nick, I, didn't think Matthews and, I didn't think Matthews and Martin would play like, uh, like yeah. you know, like the I way agree. they played. You know, that, yeah. that, that, that like, yeah. how could I, how could I, how could any reasonable person assume that? No, I agree. Right? Like, and, and then, and then, with respect to the negotiations, I'm like, I, I'm just saying, if you kept Lou around for one more year, just for those negotiations, and then you give the baton to no, Kyle. he would have signed Roman Polak they, to a 17 year I extension. Know. I agree. I agree with Nick here. Yeah, well, we can agree to disagree on that. This is hindsight. Hindsight's always 2020. You know, they're giving him shit for the Felino trade. Hindsight's 2020. It looks good. It looks bad now, but Felino was hurt. And, and like this is all hindsight is always 2020 vision. You know, we, we could say that it w- w- with certainty. That's the one thing I can say with certainty. Hindsight's always 2020. But um, even yeah. at the time of the Martin negotiations, I criticized that. I did not think that was a good contract. I said, I said, and I remember that in first year, I was talking to, I was talking to our, our, our mutual friend, Spencer. He is not worth 10.93 million because he is Sebastian Ajo. That's who he is. And they paid him. That is the one colossal failure from the, and it's a big failure, but that's the failure. The Marner negotiation was a giant, catastrophic failure that now you have to atone for. Either you, there's two options, two ways this goes. Either they atone for it by trading it, or Marner actually lives up to his potential. Those are the two, the two options that can happen, right? Right. Yeah, and I, yeah, I think yeah, they're yeah. they're banking and, on the and ladder. in terms of the in terms of the 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 the, the, the Marner reaching his potential, he is only 23 years old. You know, no, so maybe, no he's, tw- he's 24, 25. He was drafted in 24. He's still a young player. So, you know, maybe, uh, he, maybe he. Well, prime age, prime age. Yeah. And, and you know, it, 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 it's obviously frustrating as a Leaf fan because you're just like, like, I, I didn't want to overblipe the Leafs, but from what I saw this year, how could you not be excited? Like, how could you not have been excited? The team was defending well, they were killing teams. Killing them. It's, no, that, I that's know. why yeah. I, I can't even give shit to to Sheldon Keith. In my mind, Sheldon Keith is a Jack Adams nominee. The, the guy single handedly uh, turned around. Nick, the, I could not agree with you more. I could not agree with you more. The, this like, guy, you look at every defensive com- metric, they've improved in every respect. This is not his fault. I completely- and I and I like the way yeah. he handled the media conference because he was owning up to it. He wasn't deflecting like Kyle. He was actually owning up to it. So Sheldon keeps in my good books. I don't want him going anywhere. But serious changes need to happen from a man- managerial standpoint. The coaching staff is just fine in my mind. From from a regular uh, season let, perspective, see, that's fine. Yeah, but but you know, like well, how, Sheldon how, Keith how made some issues. Yeah, he made some issues. In, like like 
you, you got to adjust. Like, if you know that Marner's not working on this line, why not try him with Kerfoot and put Neil Anner on the top yeah, line? Why the fuck was Joe, why was Joe Thornton playing the half wall on the power play? Tavares is hurt, but I would have put Nylander there. Like, I don't that that I agree, <clears> and I agree with you, Nick, that Keith deserves credit because he did. He was the first Leafs coach since fucking Pat Quinn that got this team to play defense. Right? They were so good defense. They were good defensively in that series. They still, I think, right now have the second best goals against in the playoffs. It might change now because Winnipeg sucks, but still, I mean, like it's you know, it, it, it's a very, very frustrating set of affairs for a Leaf fan because you saw the potential in this team and the two guys that performed all year and led the league in various categories did not show up, and that's why they lost the series. That's who I, the blame goes on. Yeah, on Keith, I also look at the like I look at the last three games and how they couldn't start with with fire. Like like you saw Jer- Nick, you saw Jared Bednar last night calling out that's his a fair top cri- line. That's a fair criticism. Where was I that agree. from Keith? If I'm Keith, I'm saying you know what? Hey Martyr, hey our top line, their guys are outworking you. That's what Jared Bednar did last night, and they're up one nothing right now. Like where where is that? Why, why doesn't it, it sounds like Martyr and Matthews in this top line still has this kind of power over him, and and for that reason he's not totally squeaky clean for me i i i think he's still a great he's not coach, completely but... he's not he's not squeaky clean because i agree with you like like even from like a matchup <clears throat> perspective like you, you can't get out coached by dom ducharme like I, i'm you just can't i could out coach dom ducharme it, it, i don't it, know you know see maybe you maybe you all, you need to give him more credit maybe we all shat on him. i'm not i'm not like, i don't want to take anything away from montreal i think they played a great last three games of the series Full, full credit to them. I, I have not made one excuse in the, and, 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 you know, that's what Leaf fans have been doing. I have not like they, they Montreal played a great three games, but man, like you got to make some adjustments. If you're key, just basic hockey one oh one. Hey, my top line's not working. I have a winger right now. And William Nylander is playing the best hockey of his career. Why not play him with my star center? Like that's, is that not yeah, like seriously NHL, like 2021, like in a video game, you'd make that change. Why not do that in real life? Yeah, agreed, agreed. And I, I, I think Dom Ducharme ne- needs more credit because let's be honest, mid-series, things changed and, and some of that's got to be on him. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, let, let's get into that. I mean, Montreal side of things, I mean, I think the big adjustments, I, I, he put Dano Gallagher and, and my, my friend Jake Evans on a line and they single-handedly shut down that top line. They basically, they had a checking line see, and a change the yeah. series. See, like, is that not like a like a fucking like mind fuck where it's like, how the hell did Matthews get shut down by Philip Deno? Like how? <laughs> like, it, it, well, that's that's it, what that's it, it, it's that's so mind boggling. Because I'll tell you why it's because everyone at, at the midpoint of the series, everyone had a distinct role. Your role is to do this. Your role is to do that. Dano played his role to a T and, 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 and he, he, what they pay him to do. He did exactly that. Like everyone had a role. It it was defined. I don't know about that, but I don't know. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. I I think, I think it should be in Montreal. We should be in on Thomas Tatar next year. I would like that. Montreal basically just played up to their identity. I mean, you look back, Kyle, I know you were a big fan. 2010, Yaroslav Halak against the Washington Capitals. Oh, my Capitals. God. They, 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 they yeah, only they, had 16 they, shots on goal. They embraced the underdog yeah. role very – they embraced the underdog role very, very well. They um, know how to do it. They know how to yeah. get it done. And, it, yeah, uh, listen, and they did it against the Leafs. Montreal, um, I, I think we can all agree in this conversation that we'd like to see some change how monumental the change is. My hot take, and I said this to you, Nick, over text message, Morgan Riley is going to be the sacrificial lamb that suffers for the sins of 16 and 34. Right. Yeah. Because Morgan Riley played some of the best playoff hockey of his career in that series. Him and Brody were awesome. Yeah. I don't, if they're not going to move on from Marner, the only other logical piece is Morgan Riley. He's on an expiring contract. You probably want to get something for him. You know, that's the only other logical move I can see them making. If they're not going to trade Marner. The real move, what they should do is they should move on from Mitch Marner if they can get a good deal back. I don't want to force a deal. That's the key thing. Don't force one. But if they're, you have to listen at least. But if that's not going to work, the only other logical option to me is Riley. Who else has value on the team? You're not moving Matthews. He's too good. You're not trading Tavares. He's the captain. 
And you're definitely not trading William Nylander because he's, he's clearly proven that he is a big game player. And he had a great second half of the season. He was a point per game since February. You know? Le- Leafs, Leafs get rid of Morgan Riley. I'm no longer a Leaf fan. That's one of the last guys in the room that I actually respect, who's a, who actually gives a candid opinion after a game. You get rid of, you get rid of that man, I'm gone. They're going to do it, Nick. He's not sticking around. That man, he's, not he's sticking arguably around. the most popular guy in that entire room. He's not getting traded. Um, Guys love him. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Well, to bring it back to the Montreal side of things, first of all, I think we all we all owe Bergevin a massive apology. A massive apology. Mm, because the way, he's construct- seen, the way he's constructed is... No, it doesn't, Joe. Because they're going to get to the fucking top four. They're going to get to the final four. It's a foregone conclusion. They're not going to win. And the way he's constructed his roster, everyone kind of scoffed at this defensive core. Like, oh, they're slow. Marner's going to skate circles around these guys. Ben, who is Ben Sherratt? The, wow. they, this top four D is literally to a T, not even like exaggerating here, playoff built. And we all laugh at that word. We all think it's a, it, it's hilarious. But the way he scouts, the way their professional scouts do their job, who can win in the playoffs? Ben Sherrod, I, give me Ben Sherrod over Morgan Riley in this series any day of the week. Any day of the fucking wow. week, I'll go hang to on. my grave for that. Hang on a second. This guy's been unbelievable. Plays well, 30 fucking well, minutes a night. He's getting crushed. I'm not, I'm not, not going to get into whether or not I would give – Bergeron credit yet because a lot of his acquisitions. Okay. I mean, like Josh Anderson has been. And you've got like, you've got the blinders on then. You've got the blinders on. Josh Anderson has been a ghost in this series. Okay. He's not been That's good. one guy. Toffoli has been. Has Toffoli's been mediocre at best. Um, I, I don't know what like again like the Habs. This Habs team, I give them full credit for beating the Leafs, and I'm going to give them full credit for beating Winnipeg. But like I said at multiple podcasts ago, and and I was chirped for this. Winnipeg sucks. They're a horrible defensive team. They're a hor- horrible, horrible defensive team. The Leafs outplayed Montreal at five on five. Um, they had a better goals against average, and they were better defensively for the most majority of the series. I do not know if this, like, like, it is Bergevin's goal to win a cup because this Montreal team is not going to win a cup. They're not you know, good enough. They Joe, don't have the honestly, talent. honestly, with with this with the with this top four D and this goalie. They they do, man. They, they, anything can happen. To, do the Islanders, Islanders have, have the talent? Like I wouldn't say the Islanders, the Islanders have, the don't talent. have the talent, but they don't. Ha- but they're not going to win the cup either. Colorado or Tampa is going to win the cup. One of those two I don't teams know, is going to win like the you, cup. You, you can't just Tampa jump to these conclusions. Oh, I can you, because I like you. At you the end of the day, ta- the talent impossible wins. has happened. What, what team in the past like ten years has won a cup without a legitimate superstar player? And this is this is even St. Louis had the and Ryan O'Reilly. St. Louis. Louis was a superstar defenseman, and Ryan O'Reilly, who at that time was a number one center. Montreal does not have anybody in the caliber of Matthew Barzal, even Matthew Barzal on their team. That's the problem Nick? they have. They're not. Nick? They're not going to be able to. Even the Kings, the 2012 Kings, they had Anze Kopitar, who is was who's going to be in the Hall of Fame, and Drew Doughty, who's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Pittsburgh, Crosby and Malkin, Chicago, Taves and Kane. You need talent at the end of the day. They're going to win a couple of rounds, but this Habs team, they're just not going to win the cup. I, I will guarantee you that. Like, if well, I that, had that, to put- That's an easy thing to guarantee because there's eight other teams, seven other teams right now. But at the end it's of the day, enough to win a cup. They, the way they're built, they can hang with any team. They it's, can't, it's just, though, because it's a if, fact. If, they, if they played Colorado, they would lose in four. Like, Colorado would, would or Tampa would obliterate them. Boston would obliterate them. They have no answer but you, for that first line. We said that for the Leafs. We said that for the oh, but, Leafs. It yeah, happened. But, but, hey, listen, listen. I know, I I know that. But but I would say that Bergeron, Marchand, and Pasternak are the best line in hockey, and they're better for the playoff, or at least better playoff performers than the least players are. You, you have I don't to take know, that. I, I, I think I don't, I don't think you can over. You can't underestimate a team that play a certain playoff brand. The Islanders almost beat the Lightning what, last year. What, they took what them, they play took them what to double playoff brand in game six. did Montreal play in that series? Seven. Montreal did not play a – Montreal, the, the least lost that series because their stars did not show up. And I'll give it cr- half credit but, to Montreal's but why? defense. But, but why? But it's not because – Because they were shut be- down. Matthews had Price, 37 Price shots on net. 
Matthews had 37 shots on net. This is hardly a defensive masterclass from Montreal. Yeah. Matthews had like 37 shots on net and hit like four crossbars. This is hardly a defensive masterclass from Montreal. Like people try to make it out in the media because there's a lazy talking narrative of that. <laughs> and uh, you know what? And this goes to a broader theme that I have. And so does Donald Chisholm where there's something fundamentally wrong about the NHL playoffs where Sid, Matthews, McDavid, and Dryside are on the sidelines and Philip Dano is still in the playoffs. There's something fundamentally wrong with the way playoff hockey is refereed and played, if that's the case. Like, it's, they're just, it's, it's simply, it, 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 listen, Kyle, full credit to the Habs, but this team is not going to win the Cup. This team reminds me of, like, the fucking Leafs from, like, 2001 with, like, Sundin and Tucker and Domi. Yeah, they'll win a couple of rounds, but they're still not good enough to win the Cup. And even then, at least Sundin was a superstar. They don't have a superstar. They, they, they don't have the but, talent but, to win the Cup. Talent but wins Joe, at the end of the but day. Joe. You're saying full credit to the Habs, but you're not giving them any credit at all. You're I'm not giving them, them any credit, credit for, at all. I'm giving, them, I'm giving them credit for beating the Leafs, and they're probably going to beat Winnipeg, although Winnipeg, they're like gonna, I've said, is a horrible Winnipeg. defensive team. Winnipeg, yeah, but is a Winnipeg horrible can't defensive even team. score. Why can't Winnipeg score against them? They can't do anything against them. They're, they're down 3 0 in the first period because their defense sucks. I know, but they can't even score. Uh, then, yeah, they, I guess that's fine. If I'm down 3 0, I'm just going to play the Guy Boucher trap. No. This isn't some coaching masterclass from Dom Ducharme here. This is Joe, just, you're in denial. You're in I'm denial. I'm absolutely not in denial. There is not one serious hockey analyst right now that would say, yeah, you know what? Montreal has a legitimate chance of winning the cup. There's not one, unless you're fucking Arpon Basu, which probably he doesn't even believe that. There's not one legitimate hockey analyst right now that's here. They are not even remotely even close to they're not even as good as the least but they beat them they're not even as good they're not good enough to beat colorado or tampa or a boston okay. and you know what if they prove me wrong i'll come on the show and admit it but that team is so devoid in talent that they're just Joe, not good enough to win the cup every analyst said Leafs would win every analyst said the jets would win and they're up three zero like can the you jets not, realistically can you, should have lost that series against edmonton if you look at the underlying you, numbers yeah, can you acknowledge like, that it, this team is capable of surprising people of, I, 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 of course, I agree. There's some other capable of surprise. Then why are you so point, sure of yourself? Out. Where? Why are you so sure of yourself? Because talent wins okay. out. You need a number one. It doesn't to always win, win out. It, it most ninety percent uh, of the time it does. There is not one not team in, in hockey. the past ten years that have won the cup without a superstar. There just isn't. What team in the past ten years that have won the cup without a superstar? Chicago had them. Pittsburgh, St. Louis, L.A. But, okay. Detroit. Okay. There, there's, there's not Montreal either. has Montreal Boston. has a superstar, and he's in he's in goal. Okay, well, you know what? That's that, that that you know what that 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 may be true, but I still think when they play a team that clicks in the playoffs, like Tampa or Boston, or or I think it's going to be a very different, very very different scenario. But again, we'll see what happens. That's just my opinion on Montreal. I could be completely wrong. I don't think I am, but I could be completely wrong. But we'll see. Even after that Habs series, I listened to TSN 6.50 in the morning. Him, the Marinero, Mameso, all those guys in Habs radio were just were baffled at the fact that they were even there. Because they shouldn't have been. But they are. So, yeah, there is a potential for a surprise. But I'm just saying, you need talent to win a cup. High-level talent to win a cup. I, I'm not so sure if they, if they need that talent, that talent up front. You know, they, they've built Well, if you could point to out. an example in the last 10 years, I would agree with you. But there isn't. Because well, all Saint, of those teams, St. Louis superstar. is the closest one, and and right. that's a but legitimate still, thing. Is there a player on St. Louis on 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 on, on the ice outside for, that that is good as Petrangelo was at the time, or Pareko, or, uh, uh, or Ryan O'Reilly? I, I would about, argue right? Montreal's top four is playing similar to those guys, and Nick would agree because he said that, that to me. That, like that two is days that's ago. that they're, 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 I think that, that's a very very big hot take. The the top four defense of Montreal is as close to that top four defense in St. Louis that I beloved. Uh, Bomeister, Pareko, Petrangelo, Edmondson. Uh, the Habs have Edmondson, Weber, Sherratt, Petrie. It's almost analogous. They're built just like the it, Blues, it, it's but they definitely have not goal. almost. It's, it's definitely not analogous because Petrangelo was the key to that defense in twenty. Uh, when they win, when they win the cup, was it 2018, Sorry, yeah, twenty eighteen. Uh, anyways. We can move on 19. from this topic. We can move on from this topic. I don't want to shit on your parade as a Habs fan. I'd be fucking saying the same thing. Oh, I'm, Joe, I'm not upset. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm farthest thing from upset because, I mean, I, I, I I'm caution, looking at the results. I'm looking at I the just, results. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I just caution optimism. Um, 
I just caution optimism. I, sorry, cautious now, optimism. That's what I caution. One, one last thing I'll mention on the Habs is as good as I, as much as I like their defense, as much as I like the goaltending, I still don't think you win a Stanley Cup with Kotkin, Yemi, Deneau, and uh, and and Suzuki as your three centers. I, I that team does not hoist. Is that not what I've been Cup. saying for the past like ten minutes? Who knows? Yeah. I think you're you're underestimating Suzuki big time. This guy is a legit player. This guy is yeah, a he's legit a legit two C. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Well, listen, we'll we'll see what happens. It's, they'll it's meet their be match. Out. They'll meet their match next round. They'll play Vegas and they will meet their match and they will Vegas. Colorado. No, 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 no. Come no. on, buddy. Keep the board, hey, baby. I, I think uh I think what we've been doing for a long time is underestimating the goaltender position. If you look at all of the Vesna finalists, they're all in the playoffs and they're all playing major, major roles. And that doesn't include Price. That's Grubauer, that's Flurry, and that's Vasilevsky. They're all major, major pieces of their teams. And uh, and I don't think I don't think Vegas gets through Minnesota without Flurry. Am, am I wrong in that? So why are we underestimating the goaltending position? We're not like, underestimating the goaltending position, but you need something in conjunction with that to win. That's the argument. Sure, sure, but but goal goaltenders can are the only players, the only position that can win a series on their own. They're I only think, players. I think. I think. And right now, Price is feeling. Listen, they could. You could be right. I don't think you are, but that's just my opinion on the Habs. Like that's just, like, that's my diagnosis. All right. Okay. Can we move on, Kyle? We can. I got to go uh, grab another I, drink. I I'll so. be right back. I guess so. Um, so are, are we going to shock them through the rest of these uh, first round series this year? Yeah, that's probably best. Okay. Um, do you have a preference? Let's uh, let's do the, the Canadian division first. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, speaking of another epic collapse, uh, I mean, obviously not as epic as the Leafs, not as dramatic, but uh, Connor McDavid swept out of the 2021 <laughs> Stanley Cup playoffs. Who would have saw that coming? Yeah, uh, not me. Well, yeah, none of us. I, I believe only one guy, Rudy, in our pool had Winnipeg beating Edmonton. Um, yeah. yeah, commendable pick. And, uh, he, uh, he likes the logo, I think. Yeah, and, and <laughs> hey, give him credit. It, it was kind of a weird sweep, as they called it. I mean, I, I think two or three of the games went to overtime. I think three, right? So, yeah, I mean, yeah. pretty, pretty dramatic stuff. I mean, those games can go either way, but it doesn't change the fact that Connor McDavid did not win a single game in these playoffs. So uh, I guess I'll start by asking what went wrong for Connor McDavid? Well, that, that's a very difficult question to answer. I know all, all games were close. But then you look at this series and then you couple it with the series against Chicago and you're, you're realizing, holy shit, th this team is actually deeply, deeply flawed. Way, way more flawed than I ever would have thought. I mean, like, you want to think that you can rely on, you know, this, the, the top two lines, let's be honest, the top two lines to get you somewhere. But uh, somehow, miraculously, the Winnipeg Jets defense did a, a well enough job to keep McDavid to four points in four games and, and to keep him basically uh, off of any big moments. I, I was totally shocked. And, and what I have to say is McDavid's got to wear some of this. Like as, as bad as the Edmonton de depth is and their organizational issues and Gretzky goes sprinting away from the organization, it's, it's hilarious, but McDavid's got to wear some of this. Like, they, again, we bring up the contract. He's the best player in the game. You pay him the money to get the job done. And what they needed was for him to sneak a win there. Like, you know, and, and there oh wasn't God. that moment where he took over a game and where he just said, you know what, guys, I, I, I got this. Or me and, me and Leon got this, and we're just going to get it done. There wasn't that moment. And, uh, and even the they final game. They should trade McDavid, too. Yeah, <laughs> Even, even game four, uh, he had that kind of careless dump into the zone and it went back and that was the overtime winner against them. So he's yep. got to wear some of this. Um, it, is it his fault? No, it's not all his fault, but uh, that's the way they're constructed and, and it seems to be a, maybe a, a flawed system. I, I thought Edmonton was unlucky in that series. Like they, but they, like if you look at all the underlying numbers, like there's no way Winnipeg should have won that series. But again, games aren't won on the underlying numbers. If that was the case, we should be the Stanley Cup champions. So, you know, 
Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I thought they were unlucky. I, I do think they need more Edmonton, especially more from the bottom six. Like you can't, you can't win a playoff series when like you're featuring like Zach Cassie on your first line. Like it's just not, it's not going to happen. So they got to have some changes too. I think the back end's weak. And me and Nick have talked about this for years. I don't think Mike Smith is the answer in that. No. I was just about to say, I, I think Mike Smith, I mean, he played okay, but I think he got Oh, he had a great year this year. Again, he, like, he, got, he got hella buck. He was, he was outmatched by the goalie across the ice from him. And uh, you look at the game-winning goal in game two, I thought it was pretty soft on him. You look at the tying goal to make it 4-4 in game three, oh, that, yeah. that, that lead that they collapsed, I think that was a poor goal. Uh, the, the guy plays con- like consistently okay. I, I, I will admit he was okay. But the big moments, the big shots, he doesn't save them. And Connor Hellebuck does. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that, to me, was the story of the series. Yeah, w- and give credit to Winnipeg. They showed a lot of resilience in a lot of games. I think that was, uh, that was really impressive. And it wasn't necessarily the top-line guys always getting it done. Guys like Adam Lowry are, are incredible. Incredible players. He's the only guy scoring against Montreal right now. I, I'd love an Adam Lowry on my team. Uh, Ehlers was great. I mean, you know what? It, it was just, it was, it was, it was shocking. And, it, and it's, it's a good wake up call for Edmonton to say something's got to change. But I will say, once Dylan Holloway is matured, he's going to be a, a perfect fit for that second, third, middle six kind of kind of lineup. And then they've got Broberg on the way. It's just that that goaltending position. Man, did you ever need a save? Like, did you ever need a, oh, we should have, you know, that should have gone in, but it didn't stay. They didn't get main, they didn't even get one I from what I could see. They yeah, needed one of those. Regular season. He had such a good regular season too, Smith. Like, yeah. Awesome. And, and, and you just, can't, you can't guarantee he'll be anything next year. He's so old. You just don't know. He's like, he's a beer league goalie. <laughs> sports he looked like it, man. He looks, he looks bad. That sports village on a Friday night. <laughs> Uh, I wish last we, I point, wish we last point on that series, Kyle. Did uh, did Ethan Bear deserve the treatment that he got on social media? No, oh, come on. That's, no, that, uh, that was the most that's just brutal. Thing ever, as if it was Ethan Bear's fault that they lost that series. He's probably like 10th on the list of reasons why they lost that series. And they're going to go after his uh, his heritage? Are you yeah, kidding that's me? Crazy. Disgusting. That's crazy. They, yeah, they came to that. But that, this even goes back to the Leafs. Like, you can be mad at Mitch Marner, but if you're starting to send death threats to the poor guy on fucking Instagram, that's just shameful. It's hockey yeah. at the end of the day. I know it means a lot to people, but you just don't do that. Yeah. yeah. To me, those are just sour Oiler fans who just, they're looking for something, you know? You got I mean, nothing else it. going on in life. Yeah. Yeah, you live in Edmonton. Uh, <laughs> speaking of another star who collapsed in epic proportion. Sidney Crosby lost a game seven against the New York Islanders. And once again, Pittsburgh is out in the first round. That's Kyle, I'm so excited to hear your take on this. Uh, yeah. Kyle, what do you have to say about your other favorite team in the league? Uh, well, first of all, let me get this out of the way. If not for Tristan Jari, like give me, give me an average goaltender. They win the series. They were easily the better team. Not even close. They were the better team. Tristan Jari was directly responsible for at least two losses. So I'll get that out of the way. Secondly, the, the Pittsburgh depth was incredible. They played a, the, the coaching was incredible. They played their system. Their breakouts were amazing. Their, you know, the way they, they played with the Islanders, I was super impressed with. The hot take here is the top guys can no longer carry a series to a victory. They, they're good players. Sidney Crosby, Malkin was there for a little bit. He was sort of injured. They're great players. They still are. They're one. He's a one C, but they can't win a series on on their own anymore. That's just the way it is now. I watched almost all the games, and uh, and you know, Sid was a little bit on the perimeter. You know, he he really defers to his his line mates nowadays. So I just I don't know what the next step is. Like you're talking about a, a team with a terrible prospect pool. Where do you go from here, Ronnie Hextall? Uh, Jeff Carter might have been their best. Like ac- that was an amazing acquisition. That was incredible. He he might have been their best forward at times. And uh, I just you know I I can't keep picking them in the playoffs because it's starting to burn me here. And uh, and it's sad, but that's that's the way it is. You need a goalie, and uh, 
that'll mm-hmm. fix a lot, but I just don't know where, what the future holds for this team. And, and don't get me wrong. Like, Sid and, and Gino, they don't owe me or anyone else anything. They, they've done their job in, in this past 15 years. It's just it, the reality is, you know, it, it's not going to continue like that, which is sad, but here we are. Yeah, I, I just would love to see. I think that team is deep enough and I think they're good enough. I just I would love to see them without Yari because, man, like that overtime pizza he gave up oh. was just like, like inexcusable. Like you, you can't do that. Like, no, that's just no. – he was awful, awful. And you know what the funny terrible. part was? Um, one of my, my roommate, uh, Josh, is a huge Pens fan, and I was arguing with him before the series when the NHL did the top 16 goaltenders of the playoffs. Jack Campbell wasn't on there. I'm like, I don't know. I think Jack Campbell and Yari are pretty similar. And he's like, no, Yari's a miles better goalie wait and see to the playoffs. And what we wait and we saw – and uh, Right. You know, Speaks yeah, for itself. Totally. Yeah, and, and and I think Kyle's right. Single-handedly lost them two of those four games. The game one where he didn't show up, and then, of course, like you mentioned, uh, Joe, the, the, the game five overtime winner. And then to, to the Crosby point you brought up, Kyle, I mean, I messaged you in that game six. He got beat by Anthony Bovillier in a race in the defensive zone, and that was the game they, they allowed three goals in three minutes. And that, another epic jarry collapse. And uh, you're right. They 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 did everything they could to win that series. I mean, I, who would I mean Jeff Carter? Remember I told you how good he was going to be, Joe. Uh, and and that guy was their best player in the whole series. Um, so you can't uh, win a series if Jeff Carter's your best series. Much like you can't win a series hey, if Jason well said. if Jason Spets is your best player. Well right. said. And the Islanders credit them. They got goaltending. Unlike Pittsburgh, that young Ilya Sorokin is t- blossoming into a star before our eyes. Why does Trotz uh, keep going back to Varlava? Like, I don't get it. Like, I'd rather just play Sorokin. Hey, yeah. I mean, uh, maybe he believes in the veteran, but... uh, I'm just not going to question Barry Trotz anymore. That guy should be my life coach. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, So, yeah. I mean, I I think those are the two big stories there. The the big boys on Pittsburgh not necessarily carrying their load, getting outmatched by by guys on the Islanders, and then then Tristan Jari. So, I don't know what's next for that goaltending in that city, but I guess we'll see. Honestly, well, he's like, coming back. Yeah, I imagine that. Well, that's the thing I said. And I that's the thing I said. In that time, Jari was fucking up. And then I was looking at the Vegas series, and Fleury was making all these acrobatic carnival like saves. And I'm like, they need one of those, man. They need one of those. It was just it was insanity. But I think the guy you got to look at is Malkin. Like, you've got to you've got to find a way he to was, move he on was horrible. This guy. He was not he was only horrible. horrible when he's playing, but he's so 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 injury prone like you can't trust this guy to be healthy when you need him to and for that reason alone you got to try to find a way to move on from this guy because i'll be honest they play just as well without him as they did with him and i I, he can't stay healthy long enough to make that con smythe type difference that he once made so ah, it's a problem he's like he's he's in a huge decline and and, what did they sign up for do, do, are you confident in that management core and Burke and Hextall? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, <laughs> given I, the track record of Brian Burke, eh? no, I, I, I think, I think they know what needs to get done. I, I, I think I've, I'm going to give them all my confidence. Based gonna on get the traded for Ryan made. Reeves. No, no, I think that I don't think that's the way it's going to go. But I don't know. It, it's hard to say because I no one can really draw up what they should. It's depressing because I I love Pittsburgh too. Like I love the way they're built. I love Sid. I love Gino. I love Chris. Um, it was so sad to see them go out to the Islanders because I thought I don't know if this is me being biased. I thought they were the better team the vast majority of the series. Yeah. I thought they outplayed them. Um, I, they just didn't get the goaltending, and you know, you can't have that. You can have competent goaltending and win, but if you have bad goaltending in the playoffs. You're done. You can't win. You're, You're done. done. Yeah. Ask Edmonton. Ask Pittsburgh. Ask the Leafs when Freddie Anderson was in there. You cannot have subpar goaltending and win no matter how good you are. Colorado would be in the same boat if Grubauer sucked. It doesn't matter yeah. how good your team is. If you're letting in goals from, uh, you know, like glove goal, glove side goals that you should be saving consistently, you're never going to win. Oh, that, that's what happened with Hutchinson last year. That's what happened. That's what sunk Colorado, right? That's what happened. Oh God, Michael. Uh, hey, and I think it was a theme in the, in this first round playoffs, and we'll get into it shortly. Uh, the, the other E series, uh, basically the, the series I sum up as, where I found out that Craig Anderson is still in the league. Uh, Joe, did you have the same reaction? 
I didn't know he was in the league, to be honest. With you. I thought he was retired. Like, I'm like, what the hell? Is that Craig <laughs> Anderson? Like, great story, but fuck, was he shit, too. <laughs> like, it was fucking awful. <laughs> he looked like a beer leaguer. Him and Mike yeah, Smith. You know what? He's, yeah, he's, he's Sports Village and Vaughn Friday night. <laughs> Call nice, sniping, sniping short side on him. <laughs> oh, what, did, what did you think, Kyle? Uh, I, I just think Washington's overrated. Like, uh, I'll just come out with it right now. I, I don't, I don't like the way they're, they're built. Um, I don't like fucking, uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov as, as your, you know, one, two C, one C, two C like this, this, this whole thing's over. We're talking about Crosby being a little over the hill. Ovechkin's also over the hill. Like he's got the shot and it'll, it'll be there for a couple more years. Um, but he can't carry play. He can't carry his line. Uh, and then you just, you know, mid series, there was a point when the top line on, on Boston woke up finally and they're like, all right, it's time to settle this and get this done. And then you like, like you saw Taylor Hall, what an acquisition that was like, he has been just awesome, 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 awesome on the second line. And, uh, it, it's kind of revitalized Krejci in a way. And then, you know, solid goaltending from Rask and, and, and that's what it is. Um, Charlie McAvoy's really impressed me in that series from the games that I did watch. And, uh, and then what was it? Five games. It was over five or six games. And Boston looks legit. Like once again, they look like a legit contender to go all the way. And uh, I see it happening. I'm convinced Kyle that like you, me and Nick could be like the fourth line of Boston and we'd still <laughs> advance past the round. Like, right. It doesn't matter who's in their bottom six. Those guys just fucking win. They're winners. Just dump it in and that's it. Buddy, listen, Tuka Rask is an elite goalie. That first line is good. And fucking Taylor Hall is good. The Krejci line is good. They they know how to win playoff hockey. And I think Cassidy's a good coach. Like, he's a great coach. Butch. So what's the formula? Like, what is it? Tell me. I want to know. I want to know that, too. I'd like to tell the the, the Sheldon Keith. The formula is yeah. don't have the Maple Leafs crest on your sweater. That's how you win. Right on. I guarantee – I was like, if you supplanted the Leafs team and put them in, like, fucking Arizona, they, they'd win the cup. It's just the Leafs sweater on their jersey and mm. the crest on their jersey. They're cursed. I, I, I think the difference is Boston's core. They're called the perfection line for a reason. They have a history because they of show up just the production. They, they produce when the games matter most. They get the job. They don't rely on Charlie don't Coyle. Do they don't rely on Charlie Coyle to exactly. win games. He chips in. But at the end of the day, Marchand, Bergeron, and Pasternak are the ones that win the game. Yeah, that's how the Leafs have to be, and that's what you know. It's a great you know, model to look to look at, and and just think see, that's where the that's what we show. need our stars to be. You know, ever discussing the Leafs on this show again until they win a playoff series. Yeah. yeah that's, well, that's you know what's what's fascinating about Boston, really quick, very fascinating. They've only they won in twenty eleven or whatever it was. They won one cup in the last you know fifteen years. But they're always, always in that conversation of look at what team is a winner. You know, they've only won once, technically. They've been to the finals again. But what team is a winner? You've got Pittsburgh, Chicago, L.A., and Boston's in there too. And you don't talk about St. Louis that way. You don't talk about Washington that way. It, Boston's in, a, in an upper echelon category of winning, and it's because elite, of these top Elite guys. team. Elite team. Always. And, and, oh, and for the entire decade, they've been that way. They're always a threat. It's, Every it's year, it's like, impressive. oh, the, the Bruins are going to fizzle out. The Bruins are going to fizzle out. The core is aging. Yeah. They're exactly. always good. Moving on. Speaking of poor goaltending, uh, Tampa Bay, Florida, The uh, where I see this game, the, the big game here, game four, Tampa's up 2-1 in what had been an amazing series to that point from a viewing standpoint. Tampa's up 2-1. Sergei Bobrovsky gets the starting game four. Gives up five goals on 14 shots. Yanked. Spencer Knight comes in, wins a heroic game five, but can't do enough in game six. It's by then the 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 death blow had been had been had been dealt, and Florida loses this series in six. Did I did I get that right, Kyle? Yeah, I think so. And, and Spencer Knight he, in his two games was a 933 and one and one, obviously. So I think the Spencer Knight era has begun. And uh, boy, oh boy, what do you do with Sergei Bobrovsky? <laughs> like, that, talk um, about bad contracts. Yeah, that's so contract, bad. Not close to that one. That's that's rigorous. so bad. That is so bad. But uh, I mean, like, 
th- this Tampa this Tampa team is unbelievable. What they did with Kucherov is, is a little sketchy, but uh, you know, all credit to them for for using within the rules. A, this a, is little, a little, a little sketchy. This is absolutely a tactic Nick would use if he had the chance. He would try to bend the rules in his favor, no matter what. Yeah, uh, well, and, we're, and well, we're, we're future lawyers. What are you? What are you talking about? That's what we. That's, yeah. what, we, that's what Nick does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, man, oh man, it, it's so impressive to see Kucherov and Point continuously show up to the dance. If we want to talk about star players showing up, like I, I don't know if you can convince me that I would that you should take, you know, a handful of guys over Kucherov and Point. These guys are incredible. I would take that tandem over almost every tandem in the league, and um, they're 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 miraculous. Like I think that line is better than the Boston line. They're they're behind the Colorado line, and that's about it. Yeah, can't can't agree more. Uh, the other series in that division, you know, don't want to spend too much time on this one. This is the one I said I wasn't going to watch at all, and I stuck nope. with that promise. Yep. Carolina, Nashville. Um, I mean, pretty. I was pretty wrong about this one. Apparently, it was pretty. It was great. a good series. Yeah, I watched I a mean, bit of it. It was a good series. We had back back to back double overtime games in this series, which is pretty incredible. Uh, some storylines to know. I, I think uh, Alex Nedeljevic, finally, this was kind of, kind of his coming out party. He re- he really, you know, he really showed who he is. That re- young rookie in this series won all their games. Um, you know, uh, Marty Nikas of, of Carolina, he really came through. He scored a, a, he scored a tying goal in game five. Um, I mean, hey, Nashville, they gave a good fight. You know, Matt Duchesne probably showed up. Uh, he, he finally showed up, Kyle. I know you're happy to hear that. You're a big Duchesne fan. He, he scored the game-winning goal in one of the series. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, lost to take away. And my favorite moment, the uh, the Rod Brindamore cell phone moment, where he's in the yes. dressing room after the game, says, hey, it's my dad's birthday. Let's sing him a uh, happy birthday. So no, another reason to love, love Rod Brindamore. Bingo, I agree. Yeah, that was a good moment. It, it sucks what's happening to them now. And you mentioned Ned. Ned was great. And it, and it just goes to show what happens when you take Ned out of the net because Mrazek stunk the place out last night. Right. Just sad. It is sad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Tampa's kind of dismantling them a little bit, which which kind of makes me a little upset. But uh, let's see where that goes. But it, it, it was a series I did not pay attention to whatsoever. I'll be t- totally up front with that. But uh, it sounded like it was I, better than I thought. I, I'm just I'm just happy they're finally getting goaltending in Carolina, you know, because like last year against Boston, every game they played well enough to compete versus Boston. But Reimer and Mrazek were letting in these goals that just they couldn't go in. And finally, you had a guy step in there and make key saves. And unfortunately, yeah. as much as we love Rod Brindamore, I think he got the call. He got the wrong call yesterday. He put Mrazek in and it, and it blew up in their face. And it looks like they're going to be eliminated now. So yeah. Uh, yeah, well, so, yeah. listen, you run you run into that juggernaut of Tampa. It's uh, it's tough. Tampa's so fucking good. They had a four two lead yesterday for Carolina, and then they give up four unanswered. That's tough. That's a tough loss. Yeah, it's tough. And you know, imagine the team scoring on the power play. Fuck, what's that like? Right. Yeah. That's um, pretty cool. Final two series is uh, my favorite series is out west. Uh, we had, uh, we'll start with uh, Colorado St. Louis. I know you were watching this one very intently, Kyle. I had it going a long series. I think I had it going in six. I thought the character of Ryan O'Reilly would single handedly get the Blues to a game six, and I was wrong. It blew, blew up in my face, and the, uh, the Colorado Avalanche swept them in four. Uh, yeah. What happened in this series? What happened in that series is that one team had talent, the other didn't. <laughs> That's what happened. Uh. Um, and, 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 the, and the talent showed up. The talent showed yeah, up. Yeah, talent showed up. Probably, hmm. but you don't guarantee a win in the Stanley Cup playoffs. No, he's crazy for doing that. The quote it goes as follows: "We're going to have fun, and we're going to beat them." Uh, he goes on to post three assists and a minus seven. The McKinnon line absolutely torched this guy's career. I'd, I'd be surprised if he's back in the NHL next year. Uh, he's gone. He's he's Europe bound. KHL probably. Um, <laughs> but I mean, like, I'll be Nick. You said I was following this intently. A- after two games, I didn't find the need to stay up so late to watch the this series anymore because I knew it was done. Like this was just 
And it was a testament to the coaching for keeping them on track, keeping them focused every game. And then what we found was that four game sweep really had them rested and, and ready to go versus Vegas. But, um, you know, the top line was amazing. You, you saw the Kadri suspension, which to be honest, I don't, I don't even like Nazem Kadri. To be, for me, he can sit on the pine as long as he wants. I wish the Matt suspension hit. was longer. This guy is just, I, I don't, I don't like this guy. He's, he's reckless and he sucks. Um, and then I've got to bring this up because I, this is something I tweeted, which no one really paid attention to, but, uh, is, is Kale McCarr by definition, not a generational defenseman? He's the best uh, offensive defenseman we've seen in, in decades. He's he's like he he's actually to be to me he is the most important player on this team. His skill with the puck is just it's unmatched amongst defensemen. Like there's not there's few players in the league that I've seen that can move the puck as a defenseman like he can, and it's so important. But I, I think another cog to the wheel is like even Devin Taves. Like they have such a balanced lineup, and like their stars show up. Rantanen, McKinnon, Landeskog, dropping the gloves game one. Those guys oh. all show up in the playoffs. They're, they're, they're killers. He's the perfect In a literal captain. and figurative sense. Yeah, and, and it's like and, – and McKinnon has a style of game where he's not only skilled and fast, we know that, but if you try to hit him, you bounce right off because the guy's got such, such amazing core strength. He goes to the Sidney Crosby School of, 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 of leg day, and, uh, and it, it's just amazing to see. And then Nick Nick will likely point out Philip Grubauer is is a Vesna finalist and, and deservedly so. Like they have all the pieces. He's 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 playing amazing. Even when Colorado listen, Colorado falters at, at times and they're in their own end. But but Grubauer has been there to sweep up the mess time and time again. Uh, they've got depth. They're they're not even playing Bo and Byra. Like th- this team is just set up and ready to go. Uh, Alex Newhook looks amazing. Tyson Jost has stepped up big time. Uh, and I just, I have a lot of confidence in them. And they've gotten Brandon close. Brandon like, Saad, they've been, they've, oh, it's, he's been unreal. And they've gotten, they've sniffed in the last two or three years. They've had good sniffs. They've been close. They've learned a lot of lessons. And they're hungry as fuck right now. And I think that uh, th- this is the year. And this is a huge night. Like, let's be honest, a- after this show, I'll be dialed right into the game. Because this is, as Nick said, a swing game tonight for, yep. for the series. Game, game four is always the biggest. Either it's 3-1 and the series is over, or uh, or we got a series 2-2. Uh, but before we Ve- get into Vegas? that. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. No, no I, I just wanted to say, say. Yeah, yeah, continue. Well, we got to talk about their counterparts. I mean, you got to respect Vegas. They dispatched oh, right. of Minnesota in seven games. Dispatched uh, the way, in seven games. The, the well, way I, I think, lo- longer than we wanted to go, but I'll, I'll sum it up as this. Pete DeBoer single-handedly won this series for his team. Uh, I, I'll direct you to game three. They were down 2 nothing in, in, a, in a series that was 1-1. In game three, they were down 2 nothing. They then gave up a third goal to go down 3 nothing. Pete DeBoer challenges it on an offside call. Vegas goes on to score four unanswered goals, wins that game 4-2. And then in game four, a critical goalie interference challenge by Pete DeBoer, and that ushers their, their, their team to winning game four. That gave them a 3-1 uh, series lead. And those were uh, critical in uh, in ultimately winning the series. So so Pete DeBoer wins the series for the Vegas Golden Knight. Right, and and w- we saw this game seven somewhat together. We were kind of half paying attention that night, and uh, from what I saw, Vegas never looked in trouble in in that game seven. Like I was never A worried. Calm, collective. Yeah, exactly. And they win exactly. games, exactly. Like the league. <laughs> yes, um, exactly. Okay, so I, I guess if we like, we're obviously past the point of making predictions for the second round, given they're all they're all in. So, I mean, with that said, Vegas, Colorado, I, it goes without saying. I guess you two see see Colorado winning this uh, in what six games? Um, I, I see I see Colorado winning the series in like six or seven. I I think Vegas has to be respected because they're a very good defensive team and they're very they're opportunistic and they're they're good at. Um, even when they're down, like, I don't think they feel worried. They're a resilient bunch. But, like, I just think the skill of Colorado is so, like, it's so above and beyond every other team that, like, 
uh, you can't root get bet against them, you know? So I, I think Colorado is going to win in six or seven. And I think Vegas is pretty weak down the middle of the ice compared to Colorado. So I think that's going to be a, uh, a significant factor. Um, but, you know, if Colorado gets through the series, the sky's the limit for them. Like they will have faced a ton of adversity. And uh, I think the winner of this series wins the cup. I had Vegas winning the cup, but I think the winner of this <clears throat> series will go on to win the cup. Yeah, uh, I, I think this is yeah. going seven, to be honest. Uh, what I've seen from Vegas after that is after that first game is an extremely, like Joe said, resilient group. They're obviously well coached and, and they don't go away. They're they're such a fucking nuisance. Um, and they just don't go away. And they, they have a ton of talent. They've got the goalie, they've got the defense. Um and this series is like it it almost could be the finals. Like, like, like probably all of us agree, this is a, a finals in the making. It's physical, it's fast, it's it's incredible. I just think that uh the talent on Colorado will shine through. I haven't paid it enough attention today because we've been doing the show, but uh, Jared Bednar ushered that challenge to the top line. He said, you know, put my top line up against theirs. I bet, I bet you ours is losing all the, all the battles. And the, our hardest working guy, Philip Grubauer. So I heard sure. that and I thought, you know what, for sure that this team is going to have a response. And I, I can't quite say if they've had it tonight. I haven't no, really watched I, it. I, hey, like I, the way I see the series so far is Colorado. I mean, the, the league gave Colorado a win. They, Colorado can thank Gary Bettman for Game One's win because they made Vegas. This is play, a salty uh, Pete uh, the uh, one, 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 two nights after winning a Game Seven against Minnesota. You made Vegas have to go into Colorado, go into altitude, and 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 Robin Leonard gets his feelings hurt, gets lit up for seven goals. So that two, wasn't nice. Two uh, days is a and, lot, Nick. What? Two day two days off after game seven, that's more than you should expect. No, they, they played Friday night, they had Saturday night off, and they had to play again Sunday night at altitude. I thought you I thought you were talking about game one because I think game the one, Vegas we were we were watching that game Friday night and game uh, game seven against Minnesota, and that Sunday night they had to play Colorado in Colorado. Okay, okay. okay. Not fair. That's why we had that big goal. Since since Fine. then, I, I believe the stat was in games two and three. Colorado outshot, uh, or sorry, Vegas outshot Colorado, something like 45, 20. And, 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 and Colorado had no business winning last game so far, this getting game, they're getting outplayed. Uh, as I said to you, Kyle, they're going to need some oceans 11 kind of bank heist if they want to win a game here at Vegas. Cause it's very hard to win a game in Vegas. It's very well, hard to win a game in Vegas. Yeah. Well, oceans yeah, that's why I'm so, in, cause I, I'm intrigued to see how they, how they crack the code, how they figure this out. Because mm-hmm. it's going to take something. And, and obviously, it seems to me like Vegas had that first game as like, okay, here's our, our kind of our, our tune-up game. Let's it's hard to read in into it. It was so, so hard to read into that first game, too. Like, yeah. that would never happen again. Exactly. But I, I just think Colorado can find ways to, to push through and win and win games. And I think they're going to find a way today. And, and Grubauer is playing unbelievable. So Right. And, and those are the two – there's two things I give to Colorado. I mean, other than the fact they have McKinnon, they have the best player in the series. But that that that's not even a point to mention. That's out there. Everyone knows that. They have the better goalie. Grubauer is better. He is objectively better than Flurry. I'd rather have Grubauer in net. He has proven to me as a top five goalie in the league. And second, and you'll get a kick out of this one, Joe, uh, Pete DeBoer never wrote the bar exam, the Ontario bar exam. So he has a, he has a law degree. Did not do the bar exam. He's one step short of what you did, my friend. What a bitch. What a bitch, yeah. yeah. I I mean, yeah, listen, hey, uh, I I don't know if Pete DeBoer has the mental fortitude to pass the bar. (laughs) Considering he's such a shit coach. (laughs) Okay. John Cooper is the only real lawyer in this this league. He at least passed the New York bar exam. That's supposed to be tough, you know? Is it? Um, yeah. The, the worst uh, law school in the world. It doesn't matter. The New York bar exam. That's pretty tough. Pretty tough. Um, okay. And then I, I think it goes without saying Montreal, they're going to dispatch of Winnipeg here up 3 nothing, And yeah. uh, the, sa- the same can be said for huh. Tampa up, up 3-1. Uh, yeah. What, what about Boston Islanders? Who do you, uh, I guess both of you have Boston coming out of that one or, or do you have an upset there? You know what? I, 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 I thought Boston was going to run away with this series, but fucking the Islanders, man, they're a resilient bunch. 
if this goes seven, I gotta bet on the Islanders. I gotta say, like they <laughs> they fucking hang around in games like a thorn in your side. They just hang around in games. Um, what we saw in the last game is that Barzell has woken up, and I'm gonna take the Islanders. It's pretty amazing. I mean, Barzell was basically non-existent in that Pittsburgh series. And then, and then the, the last two games, he's shown up. He's he's batting pucks out of midair as well as anybody. And oh. uh, and and he, he's he's ushering his teams to wins. They're getting they're they're getting, you know, goaltending when they need. I, and basically Varlamov gave away that game 3. That this year he should arguably be be 3-1 for the Islanders uh, off that Brad Marchand goal. Um so so I you, you know what? You bring up a good point, Joe. I mean, you can't bet against Barry Trotz. The guy just knows how to win these long series. If it's going seven, it's almost like you bet on Trotz. And, uh, yeah, you don't bet on the Islanders. You just bet on Barry. Exactly. And, hey, we love Butch Cassidy, and we love the perfection line. But, uh, but I don't know. In my bracket, I had Boston. I'm going <laughs> to stick with Boston. But uh, I would not be surprised if the Islanders pull off the upset. See, I had Pittsburgh in my mind coming out of that series. So right. my, whole, my whole mental bracket's fucked up because I didn't do a bracket this year for superstitious right. reasons. Although it didn't really pay off. But um, <laughs> it was just so you'll join the bracket next year. Next year I will join the bracket because, I, you know, I, like awesome. I said, I'm, uh, I'm not watching the Leafs again uh, all season. So, yeah. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. And then uh, – to wrap things up here, Kyle, we just have some shotgun topics, and uh, I will pass the baton off to you. I assume you want to talk about this little tournament out in Latvia oh. called the World Championship. So why don't you educate yes. everyone on what the hell has happened these last two weeks? Because as far as I was concerned, Canada was out after the first week. So, yeah, just from the Canada perspective, what, what we had was the ragamuff bunch of Canadians uh, a, a lot of no-name players, probably the least amount of talent they've ever sent for obvious reasons, a.k.a. the, 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 the pandemic and all that. But uh, this was one of their most miraculous wins in the gold medal game we've actually ever seen, technically, because their first three games, they went 0 for 3, losing to Germany, losing to Latvia. They lost to Latvia with this fucking team, and they just won gold. They wouldn't even have made the quarterfinals if not for a miracle situation going to overtime with like the Latvian team or something like something crazy had to happen. It happened. And then uh, they just kept winning and winning and winning. Uh, Gerard Gallant uh, feathering his cap. They were talking a lot about how he's raised his stock. Um, Andre Tourgny, the assistant coach there, he continues to win. Um, and then you saw you saw the consensus number one, Owen Power playing 24 minutes in in the gold medal game he was he looks the part like to me i know there's a lot of doubters on on twitter and all that owen power looks the part of a surefire top two defenseman top pairing defenseman and i have no problem taking him number one overall i think buffalo's got to do that uh and he just he looks amazing so that's that's where what i saw from them uh manji apani was the mvp of the tournament he was outstanding that guy is Big Italian boy, Calgary. Yeah, he was amazing. So Calgary, Ontario. There. Connor Brown was sweet too, and then you saw guys like Maxime Comtois. Like these are the guys that made up this team, and it was just it was cool to see these underdog stories come into fruition um, in a lot of ways. So it was a fun tournament for those who followed. I didn't really follow that much, but uh, just a huge character win for Canada. And uh, I mean. You talk about Owen Power. How about the draft lottery? Uh, you basically get uh, the result you want. Yeah. Uh, Buffalo ends up winning the first overall pick. Uh, so is this what you anticipate? Owen Power going to Buffalo? Uh, they, they've got to take this guy, Nick, um, for many reasons. First of all, it takes a ton of pressure off Rasmus Dahlin. And then you get that kind of you know solidification back there that you've always wanted. Um all of a sudden, the, the D looks formidable with, with these two guys as your top two defensemen. So that for that reason, you've got to do it. He's a can't-miss guy. You don't want to swing for the fences on, on a Matty Beneers. Beneers could be great, although I don't think he's going to be a number one. He was just injured. Oh, really? Yeah, he fell. He's gonna, he, I think mean, he's going to have to have surgery or something. So that's going to – yeah, that's going to hurt his draft stock. I mean, just do the right thing. Make the easy decision. Owen Power's a great one there. 
And then Seattle, that's when the draft really starts in my mind. That was a, you know, good for them for winning the second. And, and then, uh, but you know what? Uh, you keep looking at this draft. It's such a lame draft, man. Like I couldn't even tell you these top five guys, if they're going to do anything. I've seen power now and I'm happy with that. We've seen Beneers, but if you look at Beneers and his, uh, and his, his production, like actually his hockey DB, it's nothing to really look twice at. He's got like a point per game in, at the, U, uh, at the college level, which is great, but you know, he doesn't blow you away statistically. So it's just, it's a draft you want to, you just want to miss at the end of the day, but good on Buffalo. They needed this. I think Nick has disappeared. Um, He's got a white screen. Yeah, I think someone has maybe come uh, come home. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll move on from that. Uh, Buffalo wins the draft lottery. That's fantastic. Um, so, what do you think, Joe, about uh, Wayne Gretzky joining the I think TNT uh, man, broadcast group? This what is, is that about? You know what, man? This. Next year, I'm very excited to see the ESPN and TNT shit because it's going to be great. Like, I saw Stephen A. Smith talking about the Oilers, and I was yeah. dying of laughter. I saw him compare the Leafs to the Dallas Cowboys, and I was fucking dying. This is so good for the game of hockey. Like, I know yeah. we laugh and joke around of, like, Americans, like, they don't know anything about hockey, but, man, you want it on Sports Center. You want guys like Wayne Gretzky on the American Pound because it's going to grow the game, and that only leads to the cap. And cabin stuff going up for every single team. So this is going to be great. I think that's awesome. And I love yeah. how we, like, the day after the owners lost, I was like, yeah, Wayne Gretzky's leaving too. They managed to kick out, like, Wayne Gretzky from their organization. They're so bad. Yeah. They're like, fuck it. I'm gone too. Yeah. So something tells me Gretzky maybe gambled away too much money and, and needed to chase a little bit more. Because I never saw him in this, uh, in this analyst-type role, to be honest. I don't, I don't know – if he's going to be all that great, but I do echo what you said in, uh, in, in saying, you know, Stephen A. Smith was amazing and I can't wait to see how they get creative with, with the broadcast. Uh, Leah Hextall is going to be calling some of the games. If, if you saw that too, yeah. um, she's done a few of the games. She's, she's pretty good. I find she's got a little bit of a, of a drowsy voice, but it's kind of nice. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. And then, um, oh, he's back. Uh, what's going on there no nothing nothing um the point is i uh i wanted to before i left i wanted to uh i wanted to just say i know we're all ray ferraro fans here um he likened owen power to jay bomeister uh is that an apt comparison because if it is i'm not very excited over this draft no it's not to be honest i i don't know what ray is getting at there what, what i saw was a, a very large rangy defenseman who impressed me with his skating and uh and he had he has a heads up awareness to him so he, he's he's not gonna he doesn't blow you away offensively but uh what is going to develop there is a um you know a shot from the point an, an ability to to move the puck uh quickly but the skating and the size is already there to me and what right. I and this is going to be interesting, Nick, because the best move for Buffalo, if you take him first overall, you've got to let him stay in college one more year. I promise you, this. I is heard the he's right already. A, I heard he's already the minus five, and he didn't even get drafted yet from Buffalo. <laughs> you've got to let him stay at college one more year. I know it never happens for first overall picks, but you. It, I'm telling you, it'll do wonders. If if Kale McCarr went first overall. He likely would have played in the NHL and he wouldn't be the player he is today. He went back to college for two more years and right. look what it did for him. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they don't rush him in. And, uh, and then I heard you guys talking about the ESPN stuff. I mean, it, it's super exciting. I mean, I, I liken this to my wrestling days back in the day. It's like you got raw and SmackDown and you got TNT and and you got, uh, you got ESPN. And who's got the better talent? You know, ESPN, I, I think they got Ray Ferraro, and, and that's fantastic. But then TNT, I, I really like how Eddie Olchuk's been, been analyzing this Colorado Vegas series. And I, I think Boucher, he's off to ESPN. So, like, it's really, like, you got some interesting personalities. Gretzky, obviously, to TNT. Sorry, what, what Boucher? Uh, ESPN, ESPN has Brian Boucher and Ray Ferraro uh. as their analysts. Which I, I think Bruce has been fan. If you've been watching this Vegas, yeah. he's fantastic. He's the girl best of the game, man. In the U.S. You got to girl the game. Two one Vegas. 
Yeah, if you want Vegas now, I mean, as I said, Philip Grubauer is a better goalie, kind of a weak goal uh, there on a yeah, max patch ready goal. shot. But yeah. uh, but hopefully they can shake this off for their sake. Um, and so, yeah, no, I, I think good storylines going into there. And then speaking of broadcasting, uh, I already talked to Kyle about this. What did you think, Joe, of the uh, controversial Ron McLean comment, quote unquote, <laughs> positive for something, end quote? Yeah, that was really, really bad. And like... I, it, it's amazing because this guy stood idly by for years while Don Cherry was making like xenophobic and racist comments. And now he gets off the hook because of this. I don't know, man. Something seems fishy there, right? Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was so random. Like, what? Like, why, so, why are you saying that? He reached so deep to get that out. Like, it was such a yeah. reach. I, I, I summed <laughs> this up to, to Kyle and some of our friends is, I think he was. I think he was trying to play the BXer role. You know, I think he was trying to have a jab in there and try to make a joke because he's always Mister Conservative Ron McLean. And I think it just totally backfired and blindsided him. That's what I think happened. Right, trying to be cool, comedic relief, <laughs> and he and he failed miserably. Yeah, um, yeah. I okay. still love him though. Still love him. Yeah. And then uh, finally, just some awards as as we have some stuff being announced here. Uh, Calder Trophy, Kaprizov, Nedeljevic, and uh, Robertson, to no surprise. Uh, who, do you, who do you see winning that one, the two of you? Kaprizov. He's too good. I, I don't give a fuck about the eligibility requirements. He was awesome this year. Kaprizov, I agree. He is a, he's a polarizing player. He's, he's got amazing skating, and uh, he's good for the game. I thought you were going to say Caulfield. <sighs> He would have won if he played the whole season. Oh God! If I I couldn't I can't make a farting noise enough to this to guy re- is to unbelievable. He's unbelievably small. Doesn't matter. Um, He's slippery. <laughs> Vezina Trophy. Mark Andre Fleury, and shockingly, is his his first Vezina nomination. I I would have guessed this. Are you serious? He's he's never been nominated for the Vezina, and people are That's talking about blowing. this guy going to the Hall of Fame. That's mind blowing. Yeah, it's, it's insane. It's absolutely absurd. I didn't, I didn't know that. Crazy that's an interesting that. stat. That's a, that is a very crazy hockey stat. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> so you got Flurry, you got Grubauer, and you got Vasilevsky. Uh, who do you Jack see winning this Campbell. one? Jack Campbell. Jack <laughs> Campbell. Really? No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think I think Vasilevsky should get it. I mean, that guy. That guy's consistently the best goalie in the league. Like, he's so fucking good. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, so I watch him play, and, like, uh, like his lateral movement is only paralleled by Carey Price when he's on. Like, he's he's just great. Vasilevsky's my pick. Uh, I think – look, I looked at all their stats. They're all kind of similar. Um, so, for that reason, I'll choose Flurry because, simply, he deserves one. You know, like, he might not get another kick at this can, and uh, this is a goalie that needs a Vesna. Uh, let's be honest. That's a commendable pick, but I mean, I, I look at Flurry missed playing time with the with the with Leonard coming in. That'll hurt him. Uh, Grubauer was the most injured of all the goalies. I think that'll hurt him. Uh, Vasilevsky's the only guy there who has the stats and the games played. Uh, so I think he wins yet another Vezina there. Um, and then uh, the Ted Lindsay, this to uh, voted by the NHLPA the most outstanding player kyle's favorite award uh in, in the nhl uh sydney crosby austin matthews connor mcdavid joe is austin matthews the most outstanding player in the league i i i think mcdavid will win it but i would love to see austin win it considering how great he scored goals this year i mean uh, but no it'll probably be mcdavid but i am rooting for matthews obviously mcdavid it's not particularly close for me i agree I would be surprised. Surpri- remember, it's voted by the NHLPA. I wouldn't be surprised. McDavid's already won it. I wouldn't be surprised if they hand this off to Matthews for a change. Uh, I mean, Rocket Richard winner. Uh, what? Almost fifty goals. Uh, I could see. I could see Matthews maybe taking this home this year. So we'll see. That's ridiculous. <laughs> um. Okay, and that's it. That's uh, that's everything I got. Uh, yeah, unless anyone else has anything to add. No, I don't, nope. but uh, 
you know what? I think this was one of the best episodes of Ring Poos ever. It's going to be one of the most watched. Oh, this is going to be trending. This will be trending. In the <laughs> trending on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I have I no doubts. So. Heated. Heated. Uh, and and we, we, thank, we, we thank you for coming on, Joe. Uh, your presence is always, uh, is always valued here. And uh, we knew we had to have you on the uh, post-mortem edition of the show uh, for the Leafs. So thanks for hopping on. Agreed. Yeah, no problem. Hey, listen, man. I uh, appreciate coming by. I'm glad to be talking hockey with you guys. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a dark couple of days after the Leafs lost. But you know what? Uh, this is the embodiment of being a Leaf fan. So I'm happy, uh, happy right. to be back on the wagon. And, so uh, you're, you know, full of, you're, you're full of lies, eh? You, you've said many times you, you're going to not be a Leafs fan anymore. You said to me last night you're a Habs fan now. That, that, those, that's fake here? news. That didn't happen. That's fake news. That didn't happen. <laughs> Produce those transcripts. That didn't happen. Whatever. And, Montreal's uh, going to win the cup. Oh, uh, if they do, you'll find me dangling from the fucking ceiling. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> ah. no, I'm kidding. Uh, oh, they, they, God. They, they won't. But honestly, uh, we definitely will have to watch uh, the next round together, especially when Nick gets back. So I'm uh, very excited for that because I uh, sure. love to have some beers with you guys. Nick, when's no. that test of yours? My test? Yeah. I write on Thursday and then I write again on the 29th. So uh, then, I, then, I, then hopefully I am certified to practice law in this province. We'll see. <laughs> to be continued. Yeah. Or, or I'll just be Pete DeBoer. You know, that's my fail safe. I'm just Pete DeBoer. I'm a guy who went to law school and didn't do the bar exam. That's totally fine. No, Nick, we're going to be fine. We're, when, we, when we pass the bar, we're going to be downtown. We're going we're gonna to tear it up, meet you and Kyle. We're going to be outside Maple Leaf Square. Habs jerseys <laughs> on. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, on that note, we sign off. Thank you, everyone, to, for listening yet again. Uh, we eagerly want to get to watching this Colorado Vegas game. So with that, thank you for listening. Until next time, Rink Moose is signing off. Right. Right. Right.